We are continuing our discussions around Theresa May's recent visit to South Africa. Now, while she was here, she handed over the SS Mendy bell to President Cyril Ramaphosa. That bell was found on the English Channel years after the ship sank, claiming the lives of more than 600 mostly black South African soldiers in 1917. Let's look at the significance of this. And to do that, I'm joined by historian Professor Piti Kanduli and Godfrey Giles from the South African Legion of Military Veterans. Gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you both. I will begin with you, Prof. Nduli, and perhaps ask you about the significance of the return of this bell. Uh, I think uh, the return of the bell really kind of, uh, for me, should symbolize that uh, the great uh, empire, you know, Britain, recognizes that uh, there are black people who died, you know, for them, who did not actually die for us. And that the bell being actually being you know, brought in here symbolizes to me the spirit of the over 600 people you know, that were in there. And the gesture of bringing it actually back in here should actually be the beginning of bringing about uh, a closure and also to focus uh, you know, more on this part of the history that had been uh, so dreadfully suppressed. It's been you in here, Godfrey Giles. For many people, especially of my generation, and I don't speak for all, but there's often a sense that knowledge around the history of the sinking of the SS Mendy isn't something that is quite vast. So take us back to the events of 21st February 1917. Well, I think there are books. Uh, the Black Valor is one of them that has been written in 87 uh, regarding it as well. But I think that the, the sad thing is that most of those um, people that were part of that, or soldiers that were part of that, had never been in the sea themselves before. They came from all over South Africa, got to Cape Town, then were put onto a ship. Um, so for them to actually um, be woken up early in the morning, it was about half past four in the morning, with a sudden jolt where the Darrow went into the Mendy uh, and sank it within 25 minutes in icy, icy water at the time. It was a very still sea, but that didn't help them at all. There was a lot of fog in that as well. Then there weren't enough uh, lifeboats as well. So there was only lifeboats for about 300 of the 900 people that were on the ship itself as well. And then some of them panicked and so got onto the, the various lifeboats, which then capsized, which made it even worse. And the Darrow didn't even stop really to actually pick up those people. Um, so, you know, all of them, the crew, uh, whether those were white or black, it didn't matter, all of them suffered. Um, through a stupid accident of a captain who wasn't sounding his uh, foghorn uh, in the fog all the time to actually alert them. We, we speak about a historic event that perhaps not enough South Africans know about, and I'm wondering what it is that your organization is doing to make sure that historic events such as the sinking of the SS Mendy are not only captured, by, captured accurately. Well, we try. Uh, you know, first of all, we've been doing the remembrance service every single year um, since the, the, the First World War. So we've done it for over 90 years now. And we try and involve as many people as possible. Here in Johannesburg, we're very lucky that the city of Johannesburg has helped us enormously. And they, they make sure that that service carries on. And that's at the Avalon Cemetery, where Nelson Mandela and the Queen actually unveiled the, the uh, memorial in '95. Um, so it is difficult to try and get to everybody. It has been in the curriculum of the schools, maybe not enough. Uh, we've got a Mendy uh, scholarship fund, a memorial scholarship fund, where we try and help children as well. But it takes a lot to actually advertise and get everybody there. And I hope that everybody gets involved. I think the SANDF has done a, a tremendous job because Armed Forces Day is actually held on the day of the Mendy. So the SANDF has really recognized the valor that those people actually had. You've got the ship SS Mendy, you've got the uh, medal for valor, the highest one is the Mendy as well. Um, so it's, it's tremendous they've done. We partner with the uh, Delville Wood Memorial Trust and they in fact do these booklets. So this is the one for the Mendy and the other ones as well. Um, and they help us to actually do it. We sent people overseas last year on the, sh on the ship, the Amatola. Um, and a lot of the next of kin actually went across as well. So, yes, we try. Uh, we've got limited funds, unfortunately, and we have to do what we can. Professor Anduli, I want to bring you back in here. In speaking about history and it being recorded as accurately as possible, we cannot overlook the fact that a lot of Africans suffered in, to the aid of 
Western causes. You look at this, these were Africans being taken to wage a war that essentially had nothing to do with them. And you wonder if the likes of Britain, the French, and the other colonial powers have done enough to make amends as far as that's concerned. No, I mean, no, they've not done much uh, uh, you know, amends you know, on it. And at the same time, I'm also wondering as to whether how much we have done. And we also know that culturally, when somebody dies away from home, we go over there to go and fetch the spirit of uh, those people. We uh, get a particular tree that gets the spirit and, and bring up. I'm not sure whether we had actually done that. So that's why I'm saying the return of the bank must be the beginning of us doing the things properly, correctly, and right. It really saddens me to think about this. When you read about what Reverend uh, uh, you know, Isaac uh, Okop Joba was saying when they were there, and he's saying to these people, you know, right now we are dying. And we are dying and dying is also an arm. We have left our, our spears actually at home, but we are carrying ourselves and our spirits you know, you know, within us in a total foreign uh, in, in our land. How much we as liberation movements, whatever liberation movement is, have we actually done in order to address this uh, you know, kind of an issue? Bring the spirit of these people you know, right back and honor them and do the right thing. And this conversation then, Professor Pitikanturi, ties in with the other discussion that we've been having over the years, and this is the return of African artifacts and other historical pieces. Are we doing enough, and I've asked you this question before, are we doing enough to make sure that those ever important historical pieces are returned to Africa and their details recorded properly so that generations beyond yours and mine are able to one day point to a museum, point to a monument and say, here's what happened in 1917 or whatever other date? I'm happy to say that the day after tomorrow I'm flying to Addis Ababa I'm invited by the African Union as part of the uh, people of the Fifth Pan-African uh, you know, Conference on, on, on Culture to see how we use art and culture in order to promote our countries, to promote uh, ourselves and as well as in our education. So the uh, thing that you referred to is what is called the burning bronzes that were taken in 1897 in a punitive attack by the Brits, you know, in uh, Nigeria. Now they are prepared to take those pieces back to Nigeria, but on loan. And if you Google anything on African art, every European capital has got thousands of African works of uh, art that are so highly uh, innovated, which brings us to the irony. We were colonized because they said we are idolaters, we worshipped idols. We were colonized because we loved sculpture, we love art. <laughs> Godfrey, as we continue then to reflect on history and what was taken from us, you work a lot with military veterans, some of whom had survived the, first, the world wars and all of that. How many of them are alive today and how instrumental have they been in your ability to document South Africa's history? Well, there are none of the First World War uh, veterans still alive, so there's really the Second World War veterans uh, who we try and look after. Um, we've got various uh, housing schemes. Uh, we've got a chapel in, in uh, Mofolo in, in Soweto. Um, there are various grants that are given and uh, we're a member of the Royal Commonwealth Ex Service League and they actually give grants to a lot of uh, our veterans that were served under the crown as well to try and actually help that. And um, I, I think it's just a matter of how do we actually publicize this? You were saying, how do we publicize it? And I think with the professor here, maybe we've got to start a competition with children of art, of something about the Mendy that they can look up and uh, draw something, maybe sculpture something, uh, so that we get more people involved and create an awareness. Uh, we'd love to get a project like that going. Your organization is not one that we hear about a lot in this country when you talk about military veterans. I mean, we're familiar with the government department, but is there a link between the work that you do and the government? Very much so. So we, we've, uh, one of, we're the oldest veteran organization in South Africa. We were formed in 1921 um, uh, in Cape Town with all the other ones throughout the world. 
Um, but there are lots of veteran organizations, and then we all fall under the body of the SANVA, uh, which is South African National Military Veterans Association, which is part of the bill. And we work with the government as far as the Department of Military Veterans. Uh, unfortunately, they haven't been the greatest, but we've got a new acting DG, uh, Lieutenant General Ngwebi, who is doing a fantastic job at the moment, so we're looking forward to that. We've got to find a way of actually looking after our veterans who are desperate, and some of them are destitute, and we need to actually unlock those funds and get to them as quickly as possible uh, to, to really give them what they deserve. Uh, they gave up a lot of their time of their lives. If you look at the Second World War veterans, they get 19 Rand 50 extra on their pension for serving for five years. And when you look in the book, you'll see some of the people who actually volunteered to go. They saw the adverts uh, that were there at the time and said, I'm part of this uh, country, which is part of the kingdoms. I want to go for uh, love of king and, and country. And they actually volunteered to go as well. And others, I think it was a job. Uh, the money that they actually received was higher than the wages that they would receive here on the mines or wherever they were working. So, yeah. Professor Pitikanduli, um, are you finding that we're becoming a country that is beginning to care about our history and getting back what was taken from us? I, I think when you look at it in terms of, uh, uh, you know, kind of a governing, uh, you know, governing circles, I think with the emergence of, uh, say, President uh, uh, you know, Ramaphosa, one is beginning to feel that uh, there is some, some thinking, some move. The kind of Tumamina uh, you know, idea is there, but all of those things are not actually uh, you know, enough. Talking about Imendi and talking about veterans, then you ask yourself the question is, our veterans here, yeah, those that came in you know, from M uh, MK, those that came from APLA, those that came in on, on this, are not actually even talking to each other or agreeing to come actually together, and how would they then even address themselves to the question of uh, Imendi? So we need then that the uh, you know, government itself has got to put up resources uh, you know, to uh, organizations like uh, what Godfrey has, as well as the veterans in, in themselves. Because there are a number of other veterans uh, that, that, that took place. 1976, or some of the students uh, you know, in there were also veterans of uh, a war of uh, liberation. And these are human libraries. Yeah, yeah, these are human libraries. Mm -hmm. And yet when we talk veterans, we are not actually even including that. We are actually so kind of uh, you know, selective. But in other words, we need then actually to get back to the drawing uh, in the board. And I'm glad that I met uh, uh, in, a, in a country here. While we're outside, we're planning as to whether how we can just all pull our resources together and uh, help shape our own country uh, to look at itself with pride and with dignity, just as our founding fathers and those that fought uh, you know, before, from Makanda to, you know, to Shaga to Dingiswayo uh, you know, to Skukuni. Let those spirits of uh, those people you know, count in remembering some of our people who died so tragically. You mentioned another important point, you and Godfrey having met here, today now looking at ways to collaborate in capturing our history and Godfrey when you look at some of the reasons why we've not been able to come together on days like the commemoration of Sharpeville uh, June 16 a lot of it is because our history is political so can we ever divorce our political disagreement from the commemoration of South African history and indeed those efforts to make sure that we all have a fair enough assessment and recollection of where we come from. I think that's where um, the veteran, the organizations that I belong to and also um, the soldiers before me um, differ slightly, is that we fought for the government of the day and we are apolitical completely. So we do not belong to any one political party whatsoever. And that's what was so interesting for me when I had to work with MK, Apla, Zanla, etc., is to understand that they were a political army of a particular uh, political uh, party and to find ways of, is there a way that we can break down the political side of it and actually come together and say, we are veterans and we want to make it right for human beings of who we are. And I think that's where there's a slight difference uh, in, the, in the two opinions. Prof? Yeah. Uh, I was invited, uh, you know, to Fortrecker Wochte uh, by Professor Danny Horsen, who is a uh, president of the Federation of Africans, uh, you know, cultural group, together with uh, a range of other people, addressing the very same thing that uh, we are saying. Is that come December 16th, the day of reconciliation, 
you go over to the river Ngome or so-called Blood River. The Afrikaners will be across the river <laughs> celebrating. The Zulus will be across the river uh, in, in, in celebrating. While we're also doing a nation building uh, uh, in the programs. The meeting we had there at kind of, uh, Fort Tracker, at least we are beginning to find ourselves that you may have been on the opposite side, mm -hmm. but right now we are South Africans. Yes. As Mandela said, we are building a, a rainbow nation. Yes. Uh, the Department of Arts and Culture is entrusted with pushing the program of uh, social uh, uh, cohesion. The problem with us as South Africans, we have a genius for coming up with brilliant things, but then even worse, the, you know, genius for failing to, to do that. Truth and reconciliation, we are bought it before it's at an end. Uh, reconstruction and development, we pick it up, we get rid of it uh, uh, you know, in the end. We, we have got uh, a, a commission with a, long, with a long name, we have got the pencil, we have got moral regeneration. All of these are the most brilliant actually in the world, but do we put in any resources in them? Do we put in any thinking you know, people in, you know, in them that can actually make us proud? When you look at our constitution, you look at what we have actually created. We are about the most intelligent, most empathetic you know, people, but when it gets on to a, a, a proxy, absolutely nothing is done. You know, because as South African, anybody who is a thinker, we push them aside. We do not trust them. Okay, let's leave it there, gentlemen. Thank you very much to both of you for coming thank in. You. That was Professor Pitikantuli and Godfrey Giles speaking to us today on the back of the return or the handover earlier in the week of the bell from the SS Mendy by the British Prime Minister Theresa May. Now,